You just started your software development career. Maybe you graduated from college, maybe you went through a bootcamp, or maybe you're just like me, a self-taught developer. You are very early on in your career and the upcoming few years are going to have a huge amount of impact on your future as a professional. There are three common mistakes that if you manage to avoid, you're gonna be ahead of everyone else and set yourself for enormous success in your career. And keep an eye out for the third one, especially. Before we get started, let me tell you a little bit about myself. My name is Ariel, I'm 28 years old, and currently I'm CEO of an AI startup backed by one of the top accelerators in the world. I'm 100% self-taught. I didn't learn how to code because I needed to, I just really loved it. I enjoyed the process. I started on the front end and then I dove into the back end and eventually started getting into cloud infrastructure as well. I'm basically your typical full stack developer. Sure, I might not be the best to craft beautiful UIs, and my backends might not be as robust as somebody who's dedicated to backend work, but I can certainly take a project from end to end. And that is very, very powerful. I also love working with people and that's why I climbed the career ladder so quickly. I've had team leadership roles, engineering manager roles, head of engineering for a $5 billion biotech company and to running my own startup and being CEO. I did a lot and I learned a lot along the way and I'm here to share this with you. All right, mistake number one is compromising on your employer. When you're fresh, all you want is just to get started with your career. And sometimes you're gonna compromise on your first job. That's totally fair game and totally understandable. But you need to be careful. Landing the wrong first job and not realizing quickly enough can be a honey trap. You're gonna feel comfortable, you're gonna feel job security, but this can have some pretty bad implications for the rest of your career. For example, if you're into working with the most cutting edge technologies, know that only a very small set of companies will truly embrace using the latest and greatest technologies to solve their problems. There are many companies that don't do that. Let me give you an example from my very own career. A few years ago, I really, really believed in Node.js and the ability of Node.js to power the backend that we all code and use today. I could also see the data and the trends. I loved Node.js and I could see that the data shows that over time it's going to take over. Now, at the same time, I was working for a fintech company that used Java exclusively. The CTO did not care about Node.js or any technologies. All he cared about was using what works and you know building the product and building great things. The company was paying well. It was considered a good place to work for where I live. So it was all great. Honestly, fair game, nothing wrong here. But I wanted to secure the future of my career and I took a bet. I decided to leave the company and look for something else that would allow me to use Node.js in its early days. I landed a job at The Zone, a company that embraced JavaScript and Node.js in general, and moving there was absolutely detrimental to my success. I got to work with workloads that involve millions and tens of millions of users every day. I got to work on super interesting stuff and I got into the world of cloud infrastructure while doing that, and that's something I totally did not plan to do. Fast forward a few years, today I have two best-selling courses on Udemy about Node.js with over 200,000 students. I've landed more than one job for the purpose of rebuilding teams and restructuring technology at a company to work Node.js. All I was doing really was getting specialized in the next big thing. So I really mean it. And if you're not an intuition person, that's fine. Just check out trends from developer surveys like Stack Overflow. And don't be scared to make a move. Your career is gonna be decades long and the decisions that you make today have a lot of impact on that. The second mistake is getting stuck in your comfort zone. The tech space is moving incredibly fast. And one thing that makes a developer an A plus developer is the ability to learn very quickly and very efficiently. I am self-taught. Everything I ever wanted to learn, whether it's front-end, you know, React, Kubernetes, writing tests, maintaining pipelines, I learned it 100% on my own. How is that? Well, I have developed these muscles to learn on my own. And many of you came out of college or maybe a bootcamp and you're used to digesting information that is delivered to you. Now, here is where things need to change. You need to train the muscle of learning on your own. Do it early, and I really mean it. The sad truth is that as we spend more time in our career as developers, we're starting to lose that passion a little bit. And that little bit makes a huge difference. This passion fuels our ability to learn things quickly. Why? Because we are excited. You should really use your first few years to train that muscle of learning on your own. Because in the future, you're gonna have other things to worry about. Maybe you're gonna be moving to a different country. Maybe you're gonna have to take care of your parents. Maybe you are going to have a family and you'd like to spend more time with them. This really does affect your ability 
to stay on top of things. Make sure that you always have something you're working on that is not directly related to your employer. Go play with AI and build something with it. Build something that will make your life easier. Take a problem that you've seen at work and build a solution to it and then open source it. Or maybe take an app that you use often and appreciate, like maybe Instagram or TikTok, and build a clone of that app. Doing this will give you superpowers. And trust me, it will really pay off. I've always had something I've been working on. All right, the last, and in my opinion, the most important point. Do not neglect your soft skills. Quite the opposite. You need to actively work to develop them. Here's why. In the real world, nobody solves problems on their own. We don't work in a vacuum and you are likely to be a part of a team throughout your entire career. One of the easiest ways to shine in the dev world is to have great people skills, to know how to handle humans and people in the best way. Why is that? Because it's super rare, but it's super needed. Everybody wants good people. If you develop good people skills, your colleagues are going to be more receptive to your ideas, leadership is going to trust you, and you're going to be able to move mountains, even in the most complicated work environments, because you're a human asset, not because you're a great coder. Here are some practical things you can actively do to immediately improve your people skills. Number one, ask questions instead of immediately arguing. Somebody suggested a technology that you know is going to be a terrible choice, don't argue, ask them why. Understand the whys. First of all, because you want to understand them. Secondly, other teammates are going to see that you're asking questions and that you're not, you know, aggressive or hostile. And this is going to create a positive view of you among your teammates. Secondly, I've noticed many, many times that when you ask the right questions, people come to their senses on their own and it makes them much more open to a healthy discussion rather than a nasty argument. So ask questions, don't immediately attack people. The second tip is set an example. Let's say you join the new company and compared to your previous one, the communication is absolutely terrible. If you set an example of what good looks like, people are going to see that and replicate that because it gets praised, because it delivers great results. Don't just go and tell people, hey, the communication is terrible. Do it yourself and show the value. And trust me, people will follow. Right, the next point is to understand your business. Developers work for a business and that business has problems to solve, goals to meet and customers to care for. Understand how your work, writing lines of code, maintaining pipelines or whatever else, connects to that company vision and helps to achieve these goals. Go to your product manager and ask, hey, this feature that I'm working on, what does it do? You know, who's gonna use it? What impact does it have? Who knows, maybe you're working on something really, really important and you don't even know because it wasn't communicated properly. Be active about this. Be active about understanding the bigger picture. Everybody is going to appreciate that in leadership. And especially if you see yourself leading teams, being an engineer manager or whatever else, this is a great sense to develop and it will set you up for success. All right, the next point is to break the silos actively. If you work on a product and you're in a company, you most likely have more than a few teams working on that product. And inevitably, these teams' backlogs are intertwined. They have dependencies on each other. If you can be that person who understands what other teams are working on, where potential conflicts could arise, flag potential issues before they happen, this is going to mark you as somebody who sees, again, the bigger picture. And again, especially if you're aiming for leadership roles, this is a fantastic quality to have. And I would even say an essential quality to have. Okay, on to the last tip. And I cannot stress this enough. This is probably the most important one ask for help. Seriously, just ask for help. Too many times I've seen engineers struggling on their own, diving into engineering roller coasters just to solve something that their colleague just, you know, fixed in their previous job a few months ago, and that could have prevented hours and dozens of hours of work. This is extremely counterproductive. One of the best qualities an engineer can have is the ability to raise their hand and say, hey, I think I know how to solve this, but has anyone seen a library that can solve the same thing and save some time? Or, hey, uh, I just, you know, I just joined the company and I'm curious if somebody else has done some research about this task so I could use some of your knowledge here. Don't try to be that hero that solves everything on their own. Raise your hand, ask for help. A, it will help you get things done faster and B, it will instill a culture where people are vulnerable and they're not scared to ask for help. And trust me, these are the best companies on the planet. Anyway, folks, that's it for this video. I hope you liked it. If you wanna know more, you wanna have a chat, feel free to connect with me on LinkedIn. 
feel free to comment down below on this video and let me know what you think. Feel free to ask whatever questions you have. And if you liked it, subscribe to the channel. I'm planning to upload a lot more content like this. So if you liked it, there is a lot more to come. Thank you for joining me today and see you next time.